I really hope my opinions on this level don't make someone put out a burn notice on me. I'll show myself the door, folks. Hey there, friendos! Fredo Supreme, the American Dream, back with more Tony Hawk's Pro Skater action, finally. And today, we are going to be shredding up the Asphalt Annihilation 1 contest in good old Burnside, Portland. You know, I always knew that the dream of the 90s was alive in Portland. I just never knew it could cater to skateboarders as well. Now, that opinion that I just mentioned is that, personally, I don't like this level in this game. I kind of like it better in Grind Session a little bit more, mainly because the, the way Burnside is laid out in this game it feels a little bit too wide open, as in like there's a lot of empty space everywhere. Okay, I can honestly say I've never managed to ride the pillar for that split second that I did just then, until now. Note to self, do not input tricks when you don't enter the quarter pipe at a good enough angle. Guessing I might need all three runs to really perfect this one. Yeah, definitely want to take a third run on this. now. For those of you who haven't played Grind Session, it's a little bit more gray, which is one of the reasons why Insetic likes it better here, I imagine. But I kind of like the grays, well, in that game because it's a more realistic take on skateboarding as opposed to the Tony Hawk games, which for a while decided to go as crazy as possible. That's not a that's not a dig at this game or Grind Session. I like the design directions in both of those games. It's just that Grind Session makes better use of the environment a little bit more. And that parking lot out there underneath that NS and Company building, that actually gets used in Grind Session. In fact, it's actually necessary for several tech lines. You know what, I'm just gonna kill the run right there. Okay, maybe if I salvage the third run, I can get a gold without having to restart this. But yes, I do like certain aspects of both this and Grind Session's version of Burnside. I mean, it is colorful here. I can see where Insetic 47 was going with that. But I also like how how there is how there's so much more in the level in Grind Session. Okay, almost thought I accidentally input the command for a Japan Air at the end of that last combo. Good to know that I didn't. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Burnside is a dedicated bull rider's paradise. And these fences are soft, so I don't need to worry about crashing on them. Yeah, I'm gonna get that gold medal soon, boyos and girls, if you're watching this. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. Man, seems like the further down the list you were to begin with, the worse your score was going to be. Feel really sorry for Kareem Campbell there. Ah, the gold medal, like there was any doubt. And now we are on to my least favorite level in this game, the San Francisco Streets. They are no treat. Mainly my beefs with this level are the skate letters and the secret tape. I'll show you what I mean by going for the skate letters first. At least I can reliably get to those very quickly. Okay, safety net there. See? In order to get to the K, you have to go down a somewhat linear path to get to an otherwise inaccessible location. I actually noticed a pretty good point in Insetic's video, as in... I think one of the commentators mentioned that they've never seen anybody get the K in Skate from any other method other than going down that path all the way at the right of the beginning of the level. And I figure these skate letters are also kind of maligned in this level, but not as much as the secret tape as you will see eventually. Yes! Did a car plant on that hippie bus. You'll find a lot of those in San Francisco. T is in this art gallery looking room, and the E is back in this, I assume, church looking area. Whoops, messed the jump up a little bit. Gotta get some extra oomph. Yeah, it definitely looks like a church. Why else would the, there be this many fancy pillars and torchery, torch lights? Okay, I'm pretty sure those are candles there. Now, you might be wondering, why did I skip the S? Because it's kind of out of the way compared to the rest of the letters, sitting at the top of Hubble Ledge. I think you're supposed to actually go up the back way there. 
but I did, but I went up the stairs because I'm kind of hardcore like that. Let's see if I can just grind down it for funsies. Yes, I can. Ah, I earned another tape and now I am going off to Roswell soon. I got four more tapes to go. We can wait, video game. Now, I'm going to hold off on trying to get the secret tape until the last goal in this level, partially because there are no really good scoring lines in this level. Courtesy of this entire place being way too spread out to really get any good grind combos in. Long story short, every time I have to get the high scores in this level, which by the way, 5,000 is kind of a joke compared to later Tony Hawk games, I always use that half pipe over there because it's close by the beginning of the level, so I don't need to waste time getting to a perfect trick spot. And I can go back and forth and do tons of spin grabs. And basically, my day gets a lot easier. Not so in the case of getting the secret tape, which I view as slightly more annoying than the downhill jam secret tape, because at least that level made appearances in later Tony Hawk games where the new mechanics added kind of made getting to it a sort of cakewalk. Not so much here, where you have to go back up to the top of that building to get a second chance at getting the tape or even get a chance at getting a chance, even. The good news is, at least the cop cars in this level have some amusing dialogue. Like, they're asking where Car 54 is, or they mentioned they've got a rock star down. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the secret tape this time. So, at least there's that. Also, I do enjoy starting off most of my runs in San Francisco by doing a sick combo, or at least a grab trick, over Lombard Street. Which, by the way, is just as twisty as it is in the game as it is in real life. And when I say real life, I mean in Watch Dogs 2 and Driver San Francisco, the only other two places I've been to San Francisco, in video games at least. San Fierro does not count, because it's pretend San Francisco, as opposed to being explicitly modeled off of the real San Fran. That is also a hazard of getting up to the roof and not being precise. You fall off because there's no quarter pipes all around there, or at least guardrails to keep you from falling off. Meanwhile, the downtown Minneapolis secret tape was slightly easier because the building that you made the leap from not only had a very easy way of getting back up to it, but it also had some quarter pipes around to give you a chance to get some trick-induced turbo, again, gotta mention that, to make the leap to get the secret tape, because in both cases, it's a literal leap of faith. Much like it is here. My way of leaving it in the... in a later Tony Hawk game and fixing it that way, basically just leave the tape there, and if it were in one of the underground games, you could get off your board to get the tape, thereby nullifying the whole point of making the secret tape so difficult to get to in the first place. Once again, Trick Induced Turbo to the rescue. And Victory Benny Hana, and a Victory 1 Foot 5 0 Thumpin', because why not? Also, I did not know that Chad Muska actually did do a 1 footed 5 0 grind while holding a boombox. I just thought they put that in there because it looked cool. Oh, right, I still haven't got. Oh, I didn't get all five cop cars. Yeah, that cop car right behind you kind of sneaks up on you. You kind of don't know that it's there if you didn't hear the radio chatter at the beginning of the level, or at least if you waited around for a little bit, or just kind of looked at the back of the box to see Tony Hawk getting plowed down by one of those things. I imagine the police cruisers were originally meant to move around the level, and that would have been a little bit annoying, because there is a challenge in ESPN X Games Skateboarding that requires you to knock the marquees off of five taxi cabs that are driving around the San Francisco level, and that level... That goal kind of gets a little annoying because most of the cabs are moving around and you still get knocked down if you hit the cabs and you're not connected to the marquees enough. Well, if you're not aiming at the marquees enough. Good news is the five cop cars in this level are a lot easier than getting the secret tape ever could be. Really, what collectible challenge in a Tony Hawk game isn't easier than the secret tape? No, wait, maybe Escape from Alcatraz in Pro Skater 4 is a little more difficult. Ah, man, I got busted. Suddenly I'm having flashbacks to my worst performing Saints Row 2 episodes when I kept screwing up. Oh, corporate Warfare, that's the episode that I am reminded of. Well, 
Time to make tracks for Roswell. And now we are coming up on the finale of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the Concrete Conspiracy 99 contest in Roswell, New Mexico. Nearly 20 years. Wait a minute, hang on a second. I'm gonna go do some research quick. When did they raid Area 51? Ah, found it. Nearly 20 years before the actual Area 51 raid, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater came out on September 29th, 99. Hang on a sec. And the Area 51 raid took place on September 20th, 2019. Almost feels like that this game is oddly psychic in certain regards. After all, you can play as Spider-Man in the second game, and Blitzkrieg Bop is in the third game soundtrack. And then one of the Spider-Man movies actually had Peter Parker skateboarding for a brief scene while Blitzkrieg Bop played in the background. So I'd say that there's a few things about future media that the Tony Hawk games are oddly good at predicting. Kind of awesome, really. By the way, something that I should have pointed out in the previous level is that this game has Here and Now by the Ernies in its soundtrack, and also, as you saw, a level that takes place in San Francisco, whereas Watch Dogs 2 takes place in San Francisco for part of it, or at least most of it anyways. And that game also has Here and Now in its soundtrack, albeit not actually on any of the radio stations. It's actually one of the songs that randomly plays when you're in Axel Board Shop, the skater-themed clothing store. Okay, that officially makes it a third example of a Tony Hawk game predicting something from the future. Man, got them black helicopters moving about over the skies here. It's creepy almost. And again, I kind of use the half pipes as a way to score a ton of points in this level. Ooh! I kind of was trying to aim for a grind on the quarter pipe there. But I kind of missed. Let's see what's in this room. No admittance? Biohazard? Ooh, dinosaur bones? UFOs? Eyeballs staring at me for no reason? Pretty sure that was a tank. And I'm pretty sure that was a jeep of some kind. I'll check that out when I'm checking out stuff in the bonus video of this playthrough. Yeah, those are some nice healthy scores. See if I can boost those up a little bit. Not letting that 91 point whatever in the first run drag me down. That is not how the American dream rolls. And one of my favorite songs in this game, Jerry Was a Race Car Driver by Primus is playing. You know what, I'll just check it out now. Okay, I still can't get a good shot of it, or a good view of it. I'm just, I'm just gonna see how much I can do out here. Ooh, crap. See if I can siphon, or at least jury-rig a new combo out of that. Ah, so close. And I wiped out at the last second. 92.6. Damn straight, baby! And got me another shiny gold medal. Three for three. Not two shabs, Fredo. Not two shabs. And something this game kind of predicted, again, something else that was already mentioned in Insetics videos. Finishing off your extreme sports game playthrough with a Bales montage. Oof. Oof. Okay. When you're actually watching these as opposed to just skipping them because you just want to unlock all the bonus features in the game, some of these actually look kind of painful. Which would be an excuse to skateboard in a Kevlar vest. Ugh. Uh, sir, I don't think your dreads or whatever long hair you had was enough to shield you from that. And that guy's gonna need a dental job or something. Ah, top pro skater. I wonder if that's a nod to how Neversoft were fans of the arcade game Top Skater, which is one of the reasons why the downhill levels in this game exist. A... Something of an homage to that game. I'll leave that question to the scholars. Up, there's the boombox grind. Couldn't really see it, but... 
At least you saw him grind the rail while holding the boombox. Didn't really have enough to say about that part, so I'm just going to cut out most of that, considering how I'm not interested in getting copyright strikes for using licensed music without muffling it up enough. I cut out the credits there, partially because I didn't really have anything to reflect upon that I didn't mention in previous videos. And thus ends Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It's a fun way to start off a series. Honestly, it hasn't really aged well for some things, Mainly the lack of tricks you can do and the fact that you can't mash buttons to get out of a bail faster. That's the, uh, my biggest complaint with this game. So, I believe that is where we shall conclude for today. I'm Fredo Supreme, the American Dream. Holla y'all later.